Welcome to Catch and Go. It's your blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. We're going to go into the conclusion of our title called Stretch Out Your Hands. But before we go into that main chapter, we're going to go right back to Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 to 29. In verse 21, God gives Moses specific instructions. And Moses lifts his hands towards heaven. And the minute he does, the Lord turned Egypt into a place of darkness. Not only it was pitch black, but Moses extended his hands towards heaven. In the minute that Moses extended his hands, the Lord immediately responded and not only came through for Moses in the Israelites, but he struck Egypt with blackouts and it was pitch dark. You see, we're coming to the point of many blackouts where many nations are going to experience blackouts in darkness. But the PowerPoint to verse 21 and 22 that God says you're something powerful. Moses stretched your hands towards heaven. The next thing God uttered out of his mouth to Moses, he said, I want the Egyptians to feel what it is. And once they felt what is to be bound by darkness, and I'm going to make it where it's so pitch black and so pitch dark in Egypt, that they're not going to be able to see one another, nor, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days where all the children of Israel had lights in their dwelling. That's verse 23. Now, verse 22 says, So Moses stretched out his hands towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days there was darkness. There was no light, but the spirit in the glory of a risen God and the spirit of Abba Father and the power of the Holy Spirit took Egypt and turned Egypt into a place that was pitch thick dark. And we're entering the moment of the dark age, the end of the church age, and you're looking basically at a moment we're going into the great tribulations those that will be left behind, a seven-year peace treaty, and the coming wrath of God, and God saying, that's enough, lights out. But what I want to point out here is that my PowerPoint is this. Moses obeys. God responds to Moses' obedience. He sees Moses' heads are lifted, and then God says, I want the Egyptian to feel that and not only feel, but once I know that they have felt what it is to be in darkness, God says to Moses, while they're in pitch darkness, I will be a beaming light, amen, and not only a beaming light, but a light in their dwelling. You see, what you need to understand that we are about not only to cross over in the third final crossover, where in 217, God opened the gates and not only opened the gates in the year of Jubilee, but he is about to cross us over, amen, to the finish line, amen, a reunion and a celebration so that we go on to live forever in eternity inside the pearly gates in the perfect dwelling of a living father, amen, and a glorious risen son, his son named Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and also the Holy Spirit. I wanted to make these points out to you from Exodus chapter 10 because you need to understand that it is pitch dark outside in 2021. And what you need to know that it's going to get worse and worse. But can I say to you, God has just basically set you up and he's got a masterpiece. We're getting to the point of Mordecai at the gate the moment of Mordecai at the gate, an Esther moment, and where Esther into the palace, the church 
God just said to me, the bride, and he said to me, rehearse, the word he rehearsal, the, what he's basically saying, that every believer needs to be locked and ready, rehearsing every single day, reciting the scriptures and the verses, and getting ready for the third and final crossover, because the wrath of God is coming. And what you're going to realize, and what the left is going to realize and know is this, that God is about not only to bring his wrath, but lights out. We're reaching the moment of another prophecy in the making that will be fulfilled. July 9, 2021, we are reaching the point of what? Haman went to the gallop. We're seeing July 9, 2021, where the Spirit of God took me into this vision and showed me a male, a man, had hanged himself. And then he went on to say, first he went on to say before he showed me that man had hanged himself, he said to me, exposing moment. God is about to expose. They're going to stop. To, they're going to start to drop like popcorn and the wrath of God and not only those on the left and those wicked men and crooked corrupt men and leaders around the world including God, God exposing those dismacked in Ephesians 4.11 and born again believers that are not living right God is simply saying my wrath is coming and lights out but in Exodus chapter 10 God says there in the 23rd verse, they did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. And meaning there was a lockdown. They were shut down for three days. And not only that, but in 2020, they completely put us in a lockdown. They, they closed the borders. We went into a shutdown and a lockdown. And now they're trying to repeat the same cycle because the enemy loves to repeat cycles in the lives of believers and in the lives of every human being and in all of humanity. Listen, they're trying to bring a lockdown and God takes the whole nation of Egypt and he puts them in a place where it's pitch dark but the beam meaning light of God will always sustain the righteous because in the 23rd verse the light of God the glory of the God of Israel was going to be a beaming dwelling light to all the Israelites it's what you need to understand in the middle of a chaos in the middle of a coming revolt which I said God magnifies himself God glorify himself he just showed me two words chaos confusion and the second week of October and what I want to say to you that you need to pay close attention because the Antichrist can only come on the world stage when there is chaos and confusion to promote this thing called peace we're entering into a moment of the great tribulation, a peace treaty, but those that will be left behind for the seven year tribulation period. And I can tell you that since the last time I did a telecast, we're even more closer than ever to being raptured in the catching away. God can come any moment now. And so it says that Pharaoh called Moses. And verse 24, and he says, go serve the Lord, amen. Pharaoh calls Moses and says, go serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little ones also go with you. But Moses says to Pharaoh, not until we present ourselves to the Lord and make a sacrificial burnt offering. But now, let's go to the chapter in this conclusion in which I want to continue in the title, Stretch Out Your Heads. The problem is that many of you have given up, many of you are worried, many of you are concerned, many of you are not only worried and concerned, you have practically given up, you're not attending church, you lost your first love, but I want you to know that God is coming to your rescue. 
but he is also giving one final warning to the backslider and to those that are lukewarm and cold and practically to all of humanity that this is your final chance. Make your final choice. Make your final decision before the final separation. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. And in Exodus chapter 17, we're going to pick it up with verse number 9. And Moses says to Joshua, tell us about it. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Imelech. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Imelech. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the mountain. There's always three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Here you see Moses, Aaron, and Hur. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that the Israelites prevailed. And when he let down his hand, the Amalekites prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy. And I want to give you a PowerPoint example. The left is going to feel the righteous hand and the heavy righteous hands of God. And the Bible declares how dreadful it is for a man to fall into the hands of the living God. And not only you see here in verse 12 that Moses' hands became heavy and there were three that went up to the top of the hill. Just like this says in Exodus chapter 10. That God brought darkness, a thick darkness, on the nation of Egypt for three nights. One, two, and three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's always three in the working. Amen. But Moses' hand became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. He sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hand. And one, one on one side, and the other on the other side. Let me take my glasses off. And what I want to say to you, one on one side and another on the other side. There you know, there you know and I know that there is a moment where there is going to be one on one side and one on another side. There is going to be the left where it says in Isaiah 57, 21, there is no rest for the wicked. And then there's another, the other side, which is a righteous side, glory to God. And a righteous God was going not only to sustain Israel, the Israelite, and Moses, and Aaron, and Hur in those three nights when it was pitch dark with a beaming light of a glorious God. And the world, the world is about to see something so spectacular where God is going to about to display his glory because I'm going to tell you what he just said. He said the entire Shakata glory of God is about to invade the nations. It's about to invade the university. That's what he said. The university campus, high school, middle school, junior middle school. God is going to go inside the school building. God is beaming light in his glorious light. It's going to shine on the nation. Going to shine on the believers. And God wants you to know that in 2021 going into 2022 in the middle of pitch darkness in the middle of a war in the middle of a battle in the middle of a crisis in the middle of the coming revolt the spirit of God is only setting you up for an Esther encounter Mordecai at the gate and heaven to the gallow because July 9, 2021 is about to be fulfilled you see God has had enough and not only God has had enough, but it says in verse number 12 of Exodus chapter 17, Moses' hands became too heavy. And what they decided to do is one stands on this side and one stands on that side. And what God is saying, don't lean to the left, you need to lean over to the right. Don't stay in your comfort zone. Come out of your comfort zone. Don't stay in your sleeping bed and your napping time. Come out of your napping time. Get Raise your head off that pillow 
and wake up in the global awakening. God is about to awake world leaders. God is about to wake up leaders in the body of Christ. God is about to wake up those that are dead, sleep in the grave. The graves are about to pop open because I'm going to give you this weekend the three major passage in the Bible, chapters and passages in the Bible that shows that we are going to leave this earth any moment now because I have said that for the sake of the elect, the Lord have shortened the days. And what I want to say that this July showers were in July, he began to show me in part I'm going to tell you because now he's giving me the whole picture and in these three passages in three chapters I'm going to explain to you why we're leaving here but before we do there's an Esther moment from Esther 215 Esther term Esther preparing to go into the king palace God's preparing the bride for the third and final crossover but before that Mordecai at the gate 2017 he opens up the gates of Psalms 118 verse 17 to 21 and on down says that you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord and then it talks about God opens up the gates not only opens up the gate but God brings you into the perfect prophetic dwelling into his perfect dwelling and you'll be living with God in eternity forever but God will now respond to the left and to leaders and to those that are hype this thing up all up and God is basically saying it's time to strike remember I said 10 days ago that the spirit of God said the word to me smite God is about to strike. And when God lets his right hand go, lights out. He's going to start to remove people's candlestick. He's going to start to take people's breath out. There's not going to be any breathing anymore in that individual, that man or that woman or that leader. And God is basically is going to make a bold statement. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, I said, that God has the final saying. He makes the final statement. There's no such thing as trying to save the planet and this global climate change or this Glasgow summit. God is the only one that saves the righteous. But the Bible and the word of God says there is a beginning and there is an end. That he's the Alpha and the Omega. And look, there's not a beast not even the devil, not Lucifer, not the one third fallen angelical being, no global elite, no billionaire, no millionaire, not a man and a woman that walks on this earth or Satan or the Antichrist or the demon or anything in the pits of hell that can save this planet. This is not global warming or global climate change. This is God saying we're entering the time where we're entering the moment where the earth is on its last breath. And I said last year that God showed me the angel with a golden sickle in his hand. And he's watering the earth one final time. And God also said he's watering at that moment with the golden sickle in his hand, the angel, watering the souls of the sick, waters of purification, watering moments, showers of blessing so that you can be soaked. God becomes the sponge to your life. He squeezes all the defects. He squeezes every wrinkle out of you. And when you stand before God, he marvels for songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 8. Because he cannot wait for his beautiful bride. It says here in Exodus chapter 17 that Moses said to Joshua, choose some men. Tell somebody, Moses told Josh, da, Joshua, choose some men. And God has got a group of men lined up. He's got a group of women lined up. 
He's got a group of men and women together, amen. The final remnant, amen, in this final generation, in this coming movement, in this coming outpouring, that God's got men and women lined up to move supernaturally in the dimensions of the power of the glorious God. God is about to bring out the best of who you are. You see, you don't even know that there's things inside of you that have hidden ability. There's things in you that are, are untapped. And now God's going to pull that out. And when he does, he's going to cause you to get so pregnetic. And you see Romans chapter 12 in your life. You see 1 Corinthians 12. You see 1 Corinthians 14. The gift. The gifts, the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost moving mightily in your soul from Acts 1 8, where Jesus also in John 20, verse 22, breathed into the disciple the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why God said, Right harvest, conversion, overturn, breath. And wait, there's a wave coming, and God is about to breathe his power and his glory on the saints, the man and the woman, that he knows that truly desire to die to self, desire for him to consume your bones, desire for him not only to consume your bones, but to shut your bones like he did Jeremiah. And the problem is that perhaps you need to ask yourself, maybe... Your hands have gotten a little bit too heavy lately. When is the last time that you have lifted your hands? You see, it's in the middle of the battle, in the thickness of the war, that when the war is getting thick and thicker, and it seems like you're losing, that's when you got to muster up that's when you gotta rise up. And that's when you gotta know that as a child of God, he is placed in you, in me, and every born again believer, a unbeatable anointing that not only is unbeatable, but there are divine gifts where the Bible says that your weapons, your we the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty pulling down stronghold. Casting down every every imagination. Look, you don't got, you're not fully loaded and fully packed just with something inside that doesn't make any sense. You're fully packed and fully loaded with every single thing of the Holy Spirit. You're fully loaded and fully packed and seal with the name of Jesus, seal with the redemption power of the name of Jesus, that precious blood. Not only that, you're sealed with the Godhead, you're sealed with the Father, you're sealed with the Son, and you're fully loaded and fully packed, and God is getting ready to use you, and the best of you is yet to come out, and the best of God, and what he has for your soul, he's about to deliver it into the hands of of every believer and every righteous man and woman that desires to die to self. That's why the July showers, I will explain the whole thing. Why the book of Esther, the time of Esther, the time of Mordecai, but the time of Haman to the gallop. July 9, 2021 is about to be fulfilled. And you see here that it says in verse number 14, 13 of Exodus chapter 13. So Joshua defeated, defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the, the Lord said to Moses, my, come on somebody. God is about to make a bold statement to the left. God is about to make it bold. God is about to let it be, be made known clear to men. And God is about to let it know, be known clear to all of humanity. That God is still the commander in chief. Uh, and when it's pitch dark in 2021, and then when it's pitch dark in 2022, and when they're trying to cause a shutdown, I told you what the Lord said several months ago. They're trying to create a shutdown, and the Lord unlocks, unlocks, tell somebody, unlocks. The mystery is hitting kingdom and is hitting manna, but the Spirit of God not only causes you, causes you to excel, 
But in a moment where now he put it, he puts together the finishing touch when it comes to the word acceleration. He accelerate. Not only he accelerate, the believers accelerate with him. Not only there will be there will be even more darker and darker moments and darkness gets more gross and grossly darker on the earth but the Lord become a beaming light to his children he sustains us in the night he sustains us in the day he sustains us in the mercy his mercies is renewed every morning he comes to you in the evening he comes to you in the afternoon he comes to you in the middle of the night and the midnight because the God God said that there is going to be a midnight encounter one, there's going to be a midnight cry, a cry for the righteous that have been prepared and ready and been rehearsing like God said at the beginning of this telecast. And then there's going to be the other side, a midnight cry for those that will be left behind. And the Lord just said, show me this. He slammed shut the door and then he said to me, also slammed shut the window. We're coming to a title in which I call the moment is now or the moment after. God is about to close things. I just said that very clearly. And it says, then the Lord said to Moses, verse number 14, Exodus 17. He says to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearings of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses, watch this, watch this, verse 15, a title that I've been wanting to speak for two years now, and I've been telling people that we need to jump on it as leaders and believers in Ephesians 4.11. Every leader needs to talk about it. Verse 15, and Moses built an altar and called its name, the Lord is my banner. Look what he does. Moses First of all, in Exodus chapter 10, God says, extend your hands to heaven. And now I'm going to cause Egypt to become dark. There's going to be darkness, and I want them to feel it. They're going to, they're going to feel what is felt, felt what it is to be bound, all right? And he said, not only that, Moses, extend your hands to heaven. But Moses says to him, we're not leaving here until there is a sacrificial offering and that we bring burnt offerings and bring to the altar and present ourselves at the altar. Sometimes I've got to take my glasses off because it is at the altar that before you get out of your seat from where you attend church, it is at the altar. You're rising up to go to that altar call, to respond to that altar call, and all of a sudden, God has already responded. It comes not only unexpectedly, but with expectations from God. He expects you to move in faith and believe in faith the minute you come out of your seat on that Sunday morning and believe that God can heal your body, that he's still the same yesterday to ever come on somebody. And when that all to call is made. God is already there. His presence has the sin. His glory has the sin. And not only his glory has the sin, but he starts to move and the Holy Ghost starts to move, opens the eyes of the blind. People on wheelchairs start to rise up and walk. They start to take their mat and walk out of that building. And what I'm basically saying, we're coming to create a miracle. We're coming to the time where God starts to create a time of creativity, a time that's peculiar when it's dark outside in 2021 and 2022 the splendor of the glory of God on the righteous but God making a bold statement and God delivering the blow to the left God is showing me I'm going to tell you what he's showing me he is showing me verse 23 of Exodus chapter 10 and I said in part one of this title, stretch out your hands. I said, you should circle that and forever remember it. And don't ever take it off your sight. Don't ever let it get away from you. And the reason God shows me verse 23 of Exodus 10 is because darkness fell 
on that entire nation of Egypt. They couldn't see each other, let alone they decided to stay indoor and they were shut down and in lockdown. But in the middle of darkness, which pitch black and dark outside, God's light became the perfect dwelling, a dwelling light. Lord, glory to God, look, if, if there's anyone that listens to this telecast, the conclusion, you need to share this video with every believer around the world because God is saying very clear on this telecast, forever remember verse 23 of Exodus chapter 10. I want to close. Moses was winning the battle. But when Moses' hands were down, he was losing the battle. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord just said to me. The Lord said to me these words. Let's read verse 11 and I'll tell you what he said of Exodus 17. And so it was when Moses, tell somebody, and so it was, tell somebody, and so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Imalak prevailed. Now I'm going to show you what the Lord said. The Lord said, and I'm going to look into this camera, and you receive it and claim it in Jesus' name. The Lord said, truth will prevail. Look, there is an overturn. There is a breath of God. There is a wave. The Lord just showed me there is the whirlwind. There is a wind that's going to blow. The righteous hand of God. And not only the righteous hand of God, but everything is ripe. It's harvest. And there is the greatest conversion of souls because the title of the fig tree is right. The angel, with, the angel with the golden sickle of his hand. And I would give you the three major chapters in passages in the Bible that clearly shows that God is going to take us out of here a whole lot sooner than you think so. Look, I want to speak into this camera and I want to tell every believer and every pastor, every teacher, and every, every evangelist, apostle, and prophet, every prophetess, every prophetic, apostolic team, you name it, whatever you want to call it. God calls the final shot. God has the final saying. In the left, I got a warning coming to you from God. God's about to bring judgment and your breath is about to be taken out. Because God said to me just now, he's not going to no longer relent. And God said to me these words. He said the word relent also. And he said, he wants pastors and leaders in Ephesians 4.11 to stop being passive, one. And the second one he said, stop compromising. Look. It is dreadful for a man to fall into the hands of God. If I was you and you're a pastor or a teacher or an evangelist, an apostle, a prophet, and you've been compromising, you've been putting your guards down and you've been passive and complacent, man, you better wake up quickly in this global awakening. God is, you just showed me. When I said that, to, when I said that God said, smite. The coming smite. God is about to strike people. And I said that about a month and a half ago. God is about to make a bold statement. Now I close with this. He says in verse 15, Exodus 17. It says there, excuse me. And Moses built an altar. And called its name, the Lord is my banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generations to generations. The Bible says that God is a God of war. And I'm coming to pronounce today on this telecast. 
I'm coming to pronounce on this telecast in the month of December 2021. God is basically saying, in December 2021, war starts right now. The war starts now. Look, God just said to me, between, this what he said. God said between his saints and his angelicals against the one-third fallen angelical beings and Lucifer and his army and against those on the left. War, war has started today. Mark it down. It's 801, 802, 803 here p.m. at night on a cool night, December 2021. God has said, the war starts now. All I can say to the left is say, look, save your soul, turn and repent, or else, God is showing me that word, or else you're going to perish. God doesn't want you to perish. God's going to give you, God's going to give you enough ample time, like he did Jezebel, to turn and repent. And I hope that many of you do. And God said, this word, which I just said to you, that the Lord told me, God said, it's also meant for the backslider, the lukewarm and those that are cold. God said, come back to your first love. I wanted to talk to you from stretch out your hands, the title, the title, stretch out your hands, give you some PowerPoints from Exodus chapter 10 that the Lord said in verse 21 to Moses, stretch out your hand towards heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hands towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. And it was three that went up to the top of the hill in Exodus chapter 17. Moses, Aaron, and Hur. And Aaron was on one side, Hur was on another side. And what I'm saying there's two sides to everything that's about to happen. The two olive branches, the two witnesses, uh, places where one on the left and one on the right. Those that are standing on the right are the righteous. Those on the left are the wicked. Look, not only there's two things, the mark of the beast and the seal of God on the righteous. Not only that, there is two different types of wind. One is a blessed wind that not only sustains and change and transform, and there's a moment of a thing called transfiguration and the beaming light and the glory of God, God and the glory light of God on the saints. And then there is the other side of that wind that completely knocks the breath out of the left. And people where God now is going to continue, continue, excuse me, to wipe out and God's wrath is coming and judgment. Not only that, there are two, the mark of the beast and the seal of God. There is two winds. There is two different breaths. One, he breathes a new level of his glory and power on the church. The other type of breath that he releases brings about destructions and eliminates the candlesticks and the breath of men. This is what God is about to do. And I'm going to tell you what the Spirit of God just said to me. Because he's about to shake the heavens and the earth. And there's going to be a mighty wind. God said to me, write this down, on December 2021. And God has said this to, to me many years, for many years. And he said it earlier this year, last year. But today he said it again. There is an east wind that's blowing. Let me say this. An east wind. And I want to go to a chapter before I close right here. And I'm going to go to this chapter and I'm going to tell you what it says in this chapter. And not only what it says in this chapter, but it says 
and Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. But let's start with verse 12. Revelation 6. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. I will explain what God was saying for weeks and months concerning the earthquake and concerning that thing called the word quake. I will tell you why that word quake consists of the three major chapters in which I'm going to talk to you about. That you will see that it can it has everything written on it, and I can tell you that I'm that I'm totally correct in this. That type of wind, that type of east wind that blows. What you're beginning to see here is he opens up the the six seal, and there is a great earthquake, but the quaking, that quake that God's been saying to prophets and to many, that quake, the substance of that has to do with the third and final crossover and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the cloud, and then we meet him in the clouds. Look, it has to do with rapture, I will explain. And what I want to say here, it says that it, there was an earthquake and the sun became black as a sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree dropped its late fig figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. And then it goes on to say that the mountains move out of its place and the kings, the, the kings of the earth Great men, rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave, every free man hid themselves in caves and rocks and mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of wrath has come and who's able to stand? That day of wrath is coming. I want to close with this. It's been a long telecast. I want to close with this. I'm going to take my glasses off and I'm looking to this camera and say this. Is it possible? I'm not making any predictions. No predictions. Not calling out any month, nor day, no day, no month, no year. I'm not talking about making predictions or anything in presumption. I just want to throw this out at you. And I said this in one of the telecasts I just did re recently. Is it possible, because the Lord just said to me, the feast of the trumpet, and he's just, I, I see what the Lord is showing me this. I want you to remember this. He's showing me the seven plagues. And it's, look, why would he say the feast of the trumpet? Is it possible, is it possible that we, in early spring 2022, early spring, spring of 2022, is it possible that we be raptured in the catching of the way and meet the Lord in the air? Now, when do you think that I believe this could happen? It's not no prediction. It's just throwing this out at you. Is it possible that on Good Friday and Easter of 2022, when people celebrate Easter and ce celebrate Resurrection Sunday, is it possible that we, the saints, are not long, no longer going to be here on earth and that we're, we probably more than likely have 120 days left or so? I'm just saying, I'm just throwing this out at you, something to think about, 120 days or maybe more, because there was 120 people in the upper room when there was a whirlwind that came and they were baptized in tongues of fire and they spoke in tongues and the Holy Spirit show up on the day of Pentecost. That's why I said, <laughs> I'm going to explain to you the three major chapters and I'm going to tell you that this is the final Pentecostal move. It's a movement, not a revival where God crosses us over, but it's not 120 people. It's more than 120 people. May the Lord so richly bless you. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit on the button to receive our latest telecast. And I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.